Hello there, I'm Joseph. And I'm Mariana. And Mariana's back. If you're if you're a regular viewer, you'll know that she's been in uh, she's been in Sesimbra with our little baby Chloe, and they've been visiting uh, Mariana's family. So they've had a, a lovely time, I think, haven't you? Yes. What did you do when you were in Sesimbra? Uh, I go to the beach. Yeah, yeah. You got to do, got to see the beach. Yeah. Yeah. She needed to know where I lived before. And... And I bet, I bet Chloe had a nice time seeing her grandparents for the first yes, time. Yeah, everyone loves Chloe. It's more the grandparents had a nice time seeing Chloe, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> and today, me and Mariana, we've gone for a quick walk. It's about half an hour's walk away from where we live. And uh, it's an absolutely beautiful place. Um, we've come here because uh, we've got some good friends. They have, uh, they have some land uh, right next to our house. It, it touches our farm. And they've got this land here as well. Um, well, they uh, they want to sell their land. His name's Joachim. He's a lovely man, and um, yeah, they want to sell this land here. Um, it's getting a bit too much for them now. They're 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 at retiring age. They'd prefer to retire, and uh, yeah, for that reason, they are selling their farm here. It's a gorgeous farm. I'm going to put on the uh, on the screen here the size of the land because although we've walked around it, when we don't know the exact size, I know where it is on the map though. So I'm going to measure that out, get the exact measurements, put those on the screen here. I'm told by the owner it's about a hectare. We were walking for quite a while round the round the boundaries of the land, so I have a feeling it's more than a hectare. But yeah, they tell me it's about a hectare. I'll write that on the screen here. And uh, the price of this land is thirty thousand euros. Uh, it's got a ruin on it, um, a house that is for reconstruction. It's a, it's a stone cottage. It's absolutely gorgeous. It has uh, has a nice flat amount of um, of uh, pasture land, which could be which could obviously be used to to have a, a few animals for the house. It's not a massive farm, so you couldn't have a herd of cattle or anything like that. But you could have you know a couple of goats or a couple of sheep. Uh, we have sheep. We love our sheep. Yes. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, you could have chickens. Uh, there's already some big mature olive trees on the land so uh, so you've got those you could obviously plant a nice little orchard or something like that and um, yeah then it's got the, its own portion of forestry at the top which is uh, which is quite big about half of the land is, is native forestry and it butts up to the uh, to the nature reserve that's on the uh, the Serra de Gardunia mountain which is this mountain here it's of course the same mountain that we butt up to on our farm so uh, so yeah it's not too far away and uh, it's absolutely beautiful. The, the, the mountain here, the nature reserve, is filled with native trees, so not trees that are prone to uh, fire risks, so not like a eucalyptus plantation or anything like that. It's gorgeous. And I think I've spoke for quite a while now, so maybe we should go have a look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, so as we walk along this uh, this track here, it really is gorgeous. It's an absolutely private track. It, um, I mean, I say it's private. It's only it only does the the property that's for sale from Joachim, and uh, and it sees to another couple of uh, another couple of ruins at the end of the track. But it's a dead end, so um, you'd pretty much only have maybe a tractor going up there every now and again from someone's uh, to someone's farm, or uh, or maybe a goat herd or something like that going up with a few goats. Um, there's also this absolutely gorgeous stream the property butts right up to the stream uh, of course but up to the track and then there's the stream and uh, it really is really is rather beautiful this is this is quite unique this property you don't see them you don't see them like this uh, all the time especially being so um, so so close to Fundau it's only it's only a few kilometers from Fundau I'd, I'd guess maybe five kilometers uh, it takes us about five minutes to drive into Fundau so around five kilometers um, so yeah, it's really well located. It's close to all the amenities. Fundau has got everything you want. Um, of course, you're uh, you're also far away enough where you're not going to have people driving past every five seconds, and you can't hear any any car noise or anything like that here. The only thing you can hear are birds singing and the uh, and the waterfall running here. And uh, yeah, it really is really is rather rather spectacular. And of course, butting up to the uh, to the national park up there as well. That's um, that's something that, that really money can't buy. But um, but yeah, let's take a little look at this uh, at this stream before we jump onto the land. This is absolutely gorgeous here. There's there's normally there's normally uh, trout in this stream, but uh, at this time of year. But because of the uh, because of the low rainfall, you can see the stream bed is quite low. This is this is very very unusual for for portugal normally normally we've had quite a bit of rain up to now uh, in the winter 
but yeah of course this year has been quite dry we did have a, a little bit of a drizzle uh, this week we had uh, the last the last two days we had some rain so that was good the farm needed it we really needed it uh, it's not really enough it wasn't a downpour it's not enough to to bring those water levels back up though however and um, of course when the when the water's low like that the trout tend to stay far uh, down downstream so they don't they don't swim upstream uh, when when we get all those heavy rains the the pools all connect up with the water and uh, and the trout come upstream um, but yeah we haven't had it this year so not much trout unfortunately but um, I'll tell you what there are though there's there's eels in this stream um, yeah you often see you often see locals coming down with some little pots and trying to catch the eels and things not here but in um, in other parts of the stream more towards where our house is but yeah this is this is a really really pretty place and now we're going to uh, now we're going to go around and explore the land a little bit Okay, so now all of the uh, all of the land to my right here is uh, is the farm for sale. Uh, we come into the farm here on this uh, on this sloped entrance that uh, that would be perfect for, for cars and things. There's also another entrance on the other side that I'll show you just a few hundred meters that way. And that that road uh, this this one here goes up to the uh, to the the lower level of the farm, the lower terrace, the one closest to the stream which is behind me. And uh, this would be the access for that. So uh, good for a tractor or something like that. And then, um, and then the other one goes directly to the house. Uh, it does need, it does need a little bit of cleaning, but uh, that can be done. That can be done super quick, super easy with a tractor. I've got a few friends with tractors, and they would definitely. They live quite close to here, so they would definitely come up there and uh, and clean that for the price for the price of a beer or two in the cafe. I'm sure. <laughs> and uh, as we as we walk on here, we've got this big, beautiful uh, chestnut tree. That's the first the first tree uh, as we come onto the farm here. And you can see there was a lot of chestnuts been pruned a little bit here and uh, you can see there was a lot of chestnuts because um, there was all the uh, oh, there's all the uh, the casings on the floor so as we first come in we just need to go under this chain here so ladies first Mariana Thank you. ever the gentleman <laughs> right yeah off we go so as we come onto the land here you can see there's quite a lot of olive trees they uh, they have been pruned but they probably are in in need of a bit of a clean up you can see there's some some young suckers and things that are all coming off the off the sides here so about a year's a year or two of growth there or maybe a little bit more so they need they need all cleaning up but yeah super easy and then there's the track as we come in the private track it's a dead end down this way We've got that beautiful stream there a lovely big chestnut tree and yeah as we come here the land goes right up the mountain here in there there's been wild boar wild boar here step over that Mariana <laughs> as we walk here you can see there is the ruin up the top there uh, it's about it's about a couple of hundred meters up the up the drive there you've got your own private drive that swoops up here and it goes directly to the house we'll take a little walk up that in a moment we can't get all the way to the house at the moment because it is overgrown of course this is reflected in the price you can see there's um there's a big hole in the wall there of the ruin but that can be that can be resolved relatively easily relatively cheaply i know lots of uh, lots of contractors builders plumbers electricians all of that sort of thing and i can uh, i can of course share all of that information with whoever with whoever wants to buy this beautiful farm and then you can see all of the all of the forestry up there that goes up to the uh, the Serra da Gardunha. That's the uh, the Gardunha mountain. That's all included as well. So there's there's an awful lot of forestry. It goes goes up here, up the mountain, and round here. It's uh, it's quite big. I don't I don't believe it's just a hectare. But um, but yeah, like I say, I'll put that on the screen. But yeah, I, I believe it's a little bit more than a hectare. Maybe one and a half, something like that. But yeah, absolutely beautiful place here. Lots of well-producing olive trees. And yeah, very stunning, very stunning indeed. As we walk up the uh, up the first terrace here on the land, you can see to the north up there. There's the little there's the little village where I live. I live just over there. Uh, you can see all those white houses. One of them somewhere is mine. And uh, and this this mountain in the background here, that's the Serra Estrella. That is the uh, the highest point on mainland Portugal. It stands at 1,993 meters altitude. It's uh, it's a beautiful drive up there. It's only about I don't know, about 20 kilometers away from here, uh, although it feels like more because when you get there, you have to 
go all the way around the mountain to get up to the top. And they sell um, they sell all these beautiful um, cheeses and presentos and things like that. So uh, yeah, a really really nice day out. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's quite a bit on this land. Uh, it's not got too many fruit trees because uh, half of the land is uh, approximately half of the land is uh, native forestry. So uh, so there's not too many fruit trees. But in the forestry, you've got uh, of course the uh, the native the native tree here, the madronu that I was talking about. Uh, I think it was the week before last. And um, yeah, they're um, they're a lovely little strawberry fruit we call them in English. And uh, they they look um, they look like a little red ball quite like similar to a strawberry but a lot smaller and more like a wild strawberry and or an alpine strawberry and yeah you can eat them straight off the tree the inside is bright yellow and uh, they taste almost like a uh, like a soft peach I guess uh, lots of lots of little tiny seeds and things they, they tell me here that um, if you eat enough of them you uh, you actually get drunk uh, I'm not sure if that's true or not but they say that uh, you'd probably have to eat 200 or 300 or something I don't know but <laughs> Um, you can make uh, Aguadent, Aguadent de Madranu out of those as well, which is a, uh, it's like a Portuguese sort of moonshine drink made out of the strawberry fruit. Um, they make it out of grapes and things as well, um, other varieties of, of um, Aguadent. But uh, yeah, very, very nice indeed. They do that in the, in the cafes and things here, they serve those. But yeah, really, really lovely. Uh, what else is there on the land here? There's, um, what is there? Two, two streams Stream. two springs yes there's two two natural springs um they're up in the forestry up towards the house up that way uh, there's one that's a lot stronger than the other one is like a uh, is like a sister stream it, it comes off of the main one and um yeah the main one is uh, is apparently quite quite strong um so the owners tell me and um yeah there's a, there's a tank up there in the forest as well uh, it really is unfortunate that we can't we can't get in there because uh, it is absolutely full of brambles but um but it's not it's not a massive area that's full of brambles so that could be that could be cleared in in maybe half a day with someone with a with a big tractor like a like a, a 70 horsepower tractor or a 90 horsepower tractor uh, not a massive tractor but you know quite a big one that would go in there and that would that would clear all of those all of that brush away and make it um make it obviously walkable and workable here there's a uh, a big cork oak tree uh, there's quite a few on the uh, on the mountain here. It's uh, like I say, full of native trees, so cork oaks, madronus. There's uh, there's uh, some pine, uh, lots of chestnuts, bay, lots of uh, lots of different trees, uh, and lots of wildlife as well. As we were walking around with uh, with Joachim earlier, um, we actually saw a deer. Of course, we didn't have our camera on us at the time, which is always the way. But there was there was a deer that ran through the forest, so that would have been that would have been nice to catch on film. But yeah, <laughs> and as we walk over the ground here, you can see. I think you can probably see there. There's um, there's lots of the signs that uh, that wild boar have been rooting around in the undergrowth here. They've been hunting for it's like ants and worms and things, I think. And of course, if there's if there's any little mushrooms or whatever, they're going to uh, they're going to hoover them up, I'm sure. But yeah. <laughs> um, so the house is really nicely situated where you can where you can see out all over across your uh, your pasture land uh, and then the forestry behind you but um but yeah no fire risk with that forestry or should i say very little fire risk because um because it's all native all native woodland and uh, as you can see from the trees around me here it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't burn here it's 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 quite evidently a really nice nice place to live um there's it's very green you get the runoff from the mountain here which is just perfect absolutely perfect when you uh, when you want to have a a farm on the mountainside but um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna walk back down to the um, to the stream now, and we're gonna walk round. And we're gonna show you the other track that goes up um, towards where the house is up there. So as we come up here now, along the track a little bit, following the stream, going upstream a little bit, um, we come round here. Here's the closest neighbour. So about about sort of three 300 metres away, I guess. Maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 400. Uh, no, probably 300. 300 metres is a good guess. <laughs> and as we come up here, you can see there's a track that goes on the grass there. This goes this goes directly to the house. So it goes up to the uh, to the next 
to the next level. Uh, it's obviously suitable for a car, but it does need, does need to be cleaned by someone with a tractor first, like I said a little while ago. And yeah, as we as we keep climbing up, this is the uh, this is the way right up to the house. It's unfortunate it's covered in brambles. Of course, that's a result of um, of, uh, of the place not being not being lived in, not being worked for uh, for quite a few decades. And um, yeah, most people they move away move away to um, to other countries. They move from uh, from uh, Portugal, central Portugal here, where the wages are probably very low. Many years ago on farms. And, um, and yeah, they go to places like Switzerland or France or, or London or somewhere like that, or Lisbon, and um, get themselves a, a better wage and everything. But yeah, this goes right up to the farm. But as you'll see now, we cannot get up there, unfortunately. But I know someone who, um, who has a tractor, I know a few people that have tractors, and they would come in and clear, clear all of this. And uh, yeah, wouldn't be, wouldn't be very expensive at all. But yeah, I think now we're going to um, we're going to head back to our farm. We've seen pretty much everything here. Uh, if you're interested in this farm or uh, or any of the other farms that I have uh, that I've put on my on my YouTube for my friends, then uh, then yeah, please email farmerforfun at outlook.com. Uh, I'll put it on the screen here. Yeah, send me an email and I'll get back to you pretty quickly. And um, and yeah, you can you can come and have a look at the farm yourself, um, or or I could do a virtual tour or something. All for free. I'm not I'm not interested in earning money out of this. Uh, all for free. But yeah, let's go back to our farm. Okay, we're now back at our farm, and uh, after that lovely long walk this morning, we've mustered up somewhat of an appetite. Uh, so today I'm going to be cooking lunch in the farmhouse kitchen here for me and Mariana. It's somewhat of a sort of Portuguese-style dish, or Portuguese-influenced anyway, I should say. Uh, we've got some uh, posto de bacalhau here, which is the other uh, sort of the loin of the bacalhau, uh, of the codfish. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, a salted cod, which is uh, Portugal's Portugal's national dish. So, uh, so what we've had to do is uh, over the last two days, I've had this uh, this uh, cod here sat in some water, which uh, helps take the salt off. And then every day, I have to keep emptying out the water. So it's now had all the all the uh, the salt taken off, and uh, we're going to be doing a bacalhau risotto. So what have I got here? I've got some uh, some risotto rice. I've got about 100 grams of Parmesan cheese here. I've got a nice red onion, some celery stalks, a couple of celery stalks, some lovely little tomatoes here, some asparagus, of course I've got the cod, some butter, some turmeric, uh, tomato pulp, and some white wine. So yeah, let's go.
Okay, we've just had lunch. We had the uh, the risotto de bacalhau. That was uh, that was really lovely. And now um, to finish the day off, me, Mariana, and our little Chloe here, we've come up to the sheep pastures. Mariana's called the sheep, and true to true to form, Sweetie always comes up to the fence first, don't you, Sweetie? <laughs> Shortly followed by Godfrey. Hey, Godfrey, how's it going? <laughs> He's now uh, he's now allowed back into the uh, into the pasture with the girls now that they've all had their had their babies and um, and yeah we've had um, had a nice nice week with the sheep on the farm haven't we really Mariana yeah. it's been lovely um, Chloe saw her saw her first lamb born we had um, Dolly Dolly are you she uh, she gave birth to um, to a little lamb that we've named we've named Connie and um, yeah Chloe was there to witness that here's Daphne with with little Annie underneath her. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. You can't quite see, but Annie, Annie the lamb. There she is. She's made an appearance. She's getting a little bit of milk from Mum there. <laughs> and we've been we've been pruning in our vineyard. So, as you can see, all of the piles here. We've been we've been busy busy with all of the uh, all of the pruning going on and everything, which has been uh, which has been lovely. And we do it alongside alongside the sheep in here and the lambs. So it's lovely to uh, to see them bouncing around the uh, bouncing around the vineyard with us while we work. And I'm going to uh, hopefully be able to put on the screen here a little video of uh, Dolly giving birth to Connie because we were uh, we were all there to witness it, not just Chloe, we were all there. And uh, yeah, I actually had to uh, had to assist a little bit on that birth. Um, it's not normal. It's not normal to have to assist, but it does happen every so often. Um, so yeah, one one out of all of the uh, all of the pregnancies we've had this year up to now, uh, I had to assist on, and uh, that was because the the contractions they were going on for a little bit too long. I could see the hooves sticking out of uh, of Dolly, and um, yeah, it was just going on for a little bit longer than I would have liked. Uh, normally, you don't want it to go on for for too too long. Obviously, the lamb is the lamb is sitting inside. And uh, hey, <laughs> and um, yeah, you don't want you don't want the lamb to uh, to obviously pass away inside the mother. That's not good. Um, so so what we done was uh, I had to had to stick my hand up there. Sorry, it's a little bit gruesome. And um, yeah, give a give a little tug and make sure that the uh, that the lamb comes out completely fine. And then what I done was uh, the lamb is laying in the straw. I didn't take my cameras up there, of course, obviously. Uh, so I just uh, I just did a little bit on the on my phone. So sorry about that. It's not the greatest quality video, but. Um, yeah, then um, I just laid the mum, laid the laid the lamb right next to the uh, the mother. Once I'd pulled it out, the mother starts licking the lamb, cleaning her off straight away. And you'll notice in the video that the lamb is um, quite quite yellow. Uh, this is meconium. It's um, it's when the it's when the little lambs they um, they they poop inside, and that through through, uh, through being squeezed and and contracted for, uh, during the contractions for 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 too long, it goes on for a little bit long, so they they poop inside. And um, yeah, that's why the lamb is so yellow. Uh, now, obviously, the after one day or, or less than a day, half a day, the mother was just cleaning her inside the lambing pens we have in the barn, and um, and yeah, now she's now she's a healthy little bouncing uh, little white lamb, and she's doing beautiful. She's she's here in our uh, in our sheep pasture in the vineyard at the moment here, but yeah, um, she's doing fantastic. And uh, yeah, there she is there, <laughs> and uh, yeah. That was uh, that was happy end to that story, and uh, yeah, Chloe was there. Chloe was there to witness the whole thing alongside us, so that was that was really nice. Her her first first lamb being born on the farm here. Um, yeah, hopefully hopefully she's going to see many more lambs being born on the farm. <laughs> I think Chloe will have a good life in a farm. You think so? <laughs> I think I think farm life is is perfect for for a little child growing up. Um, yeah, I think she's gonna I think she's gonna relish in that in that yeah. farm life i think she's gonna like it hey yeah, chloe what do you think <laughs> yeah. bless her heart you want to see more sheep yeah. how, old, how old is chloe now mariana how many weeks old is she uh, she next tuesday she go three months next tuesday she'll be three months yeah. fantastic yeah. fantastic yeah. <laughs> bless her heart but yeah that just about that just about brings her uh, brings the end to to this week on the farm here um had a lovely week we had a little connie born of course as i was saying uh, we went and viewed um joaquin's farm which uh, which is it's for sale for thirty thousand euros please uh, please feel free to drop me an email i'll put my email on the screen here and uh, and then i can put you in touch with the uh, with the owner or uh, or show you around or whatever you want me to do and um yeah we had that risotto de bacalhau. Yeah, it's good. Very nice indeed. Yeah, if I say so myself. And uh, <laughs> you are a good chef. <laughs> thank so. you. I don't know about that. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, thank you all very, very much for watching. Oh, there's one last thing that I'd just like to say before I go. Um, when we hit 5,000 subscribers uh, a few
few months back now, we um, we sent out a, a gift package to all of our Patreons, and uh, and now that we're we're hopefully going to hit uh, fifteen thousand subscribers soon, we're we're just about at fourteen thousand now. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send out um, a lovely little package of uh, of some regional things here to all of our patrons, and um, yeah, I've already I've already. Uh, commissioned some of my friends here in the village to start making me some things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna send you all so hopefully you'll like those uh, and a couple of things from the town as well so um so yeah hopefully you like those but um yeah we've had a lovely week uh thank you all for watching and uh hope to see you all again next week have an amazing week guys bye bye, bye, -bye. <laughs>